I need to figure out some dimensions before I start machining the taper attachment covers. Mainly the holes here and the distance between them. I, luckily I had one pin left from where the covers used to sit. That pin is severely bent though. But I measured it up and that's how all the new pins are going to look. I cut out five uh, blanks in case I mess up one. Mm, I'm not going to reuse the bent old one. But uh, I have uh, one question or wondering about something because the pins fit in here and then the, there are holes in the taper attachment covers that go over there and then you put the set screw there. But the, the pin is really loose in all four of the holes here. So I'm wondering if the pins are supposed to sit permanently in the covers and you don't have to do anything with the screws and then you just put the cover with the pins in there or what it's like, I don't know, because the holes here are way too big to for the pins to sit in here permanently and they'll just slip out. So as it is now, I will make the holes in the cover exactly a quarter of an inch and put these in and fit the grub screws or set screws permanently and just put the cover with everything in there. If somebody doesn't have a better idea. And now these pins here will just put in the colored block. And do this and face the end. Turn it around and face the other end. So that's the plan. I finished the pins and wouldn't you believe it, I needed the extra one. But now I have four good ones. So I guess uh, I can measure the center to center distance on the hole that needs to be drilled in the taper covers. I'm doing some multitasking here this morning. I'm going to start machining the taper attachment covers. And first I figured out that my mill as usual isn't big enough because I wanted to machine both of the, the slabs like so to square them up but it's not going to happen at all because uh, the knee or the knee is at the way at the bottom now as you might be able to see so that wouldn't work and the wires wouldn't open far enough but then one can move the wise jaw to the other side of the moving hmm, jaw, yeah, or whatever. Now it's going to work, I think. Still need to crank it a little bit more, but. going to work really nice. And the other thing I'm doing at the same time is cutting gear blanks for uh, the metric uh, threading on the pacemaker. I have already have some gears done. Uh, but I'm missing, let's see here. Um, 54, 70, 75, 81. And I cut some blanks here for 54, 70 and 75. I'm going to cut the blank for the 81 to it now. It's a 6 inch piece of 41, 40. Some heavy scaling on, scale on it, but the other ones went okay. So but it takes some time, I bet it will take close to 20 minutes to get through that one.
after you got the first plate set up in the Wise, I figured I had to hand feed the whole thing if I was going to do it in the Wise. So I changed my mind and put it on some blocks and now we can power feed that way and that way and we have about um, 10 millimeters or so to spare so we can take both way both sides without moving it and we will use the whole white travel on the mill. We finally got our step drill in the mail today. We'll see if it's any good. Um, I suspect it's no good, uh, but uh, I'll get through that sheet bottle anyway. It feels like there's kind of a little burr here, so we'll use our stone. Just stone it a little bit. We can uh, like so. Right there. Right there. That feels better. Yeah, <clears throat> then we'll put it in our drill. Try not to spin it in the shock. This is the best shot I am going to give you. First we'll uh, do some uh, input wires here. Um, uh, like so. And I have disconnected the circuit breaker. And then we'll remove the earth. this here that won't go through the hole because the hole is too small so this is um, 25 so about 25 millimeters certainly bigger than the hole that is there now 25 I don't know if you can see this but we finally got through there it wasn't the best quality and the steel layer here is pretty hard. Anyway, we got the right dimensions, so no, it's just a matter of threading the cable through here. Over here inside the cabinet. I'll vacuum out all the steel chips uh, when I'm done with everything in there. There, it's properly fastened now. We have that one spare hole. Just put the shielding back on top here. 
Line below, remove shield to wire, replace after wiring. That's what we're going to do. Just a little light torque there. That's it. Now we left is that electric or the right there that I haven't decided how we're going to do. So We'll just turn on the circuit breaker and we'll see if we got it connected in the right direction. Got our list there. Um, uh, yeah, nothing to cross off. I think that item there wasn't even on the list. Um, this last weekend, I managed to finish the gear blanks for the metric treading. Uh, two of those were uh, already finished. That gear is only missing the keys and. Uh, Originally, I had planned to make the gears twice as thick. And that was before I realized you need to put uh, two gears on uh, on the banjo somewhere, I think, uh, or uh, whatever. You need to put the two gears beside each other, and there's, then there's only room for this thickness. So that gear was uh, before it was actually almost twice as thick. Now uh, this year we can just remove the. Have to wait, and I did that on that blank too. And those four blanks are brand new. Uh, all of them are made for from 4140 heat treated, so they're about 30 Rockwell C. I guess that's uh, everything for today.